Joining us live from the studio, we have Herb Boyd from the Amsterdam News. He's also the author of several books on the civil rights movement. Herb, thanks for being with oh, us tonight. It's a pleasure. Mm -hmm. You've written extensively on the topic of uh, race-related shootings in the U.S. What was your initial reaction when you saw what happened last night? Absolutely stunning. Uh, you know, you figure that after a while, you've seen it all. And this incident here is probably the most horrific the most horrendous since 1963 when the four little girls in Birmingham had their lives destroyed at the 16th Street Baptist Church. Again, you go back to the church situation. That's a connecting thing for me. I teach civil rights uh, at the uh, City College, and each semester I make sure my students are connected, particularly from, from a young perspective, that they know about the role of young people in the civil rights movement. And I usually start with that particular incident where these four little girls are killed. The church is not a sanctuary. And one of the reasons they targeted that church is because it was an organizing point for the civil rights movement. And it may have some similarities to what happened with Mother Emanuel, uh, particularly the pastor there, Clemente Pinckney, who was very outspoken on the ramparts and on the forefront in terms of the whole Walter Scott incident most recently. But he had a whole history in terms of his commitment to the civil rights movement, not to suggest that the suspect had any of this stuff in mind, you know, uh, heaven only knows what motivated him to do this. But if you have a toxic mix, you know, of the mental illnesses in our society, the, the proliferation of guns, the kind of violence that we have here, to say nothing about racism. You know, you can deal with a few of those things, but one of them is so deep, almost ineradicable, you know, dealing with uh, white supremacy. Mm. And you mentioned the church, uh, Mother Emanuel AME Church, yes. one of the most historic churches in the South. Mm. What is the significance of that place in Charleston? I think one of the things about that, if you go all the way back to its very inception in 1816, it was like six years before Denmark Vesey's, you know, slave rebellion, 1822. It came as a result of a number of AME churches in this country because, because they wouldn't get fair treatment inside of the larger framework. They broke away and started their own particular church. Very much like what uh, Richard Allen and Absalom Jones had done in Philadelphia in a previous generation. So they were carrying on that tradition with uh, Mother Emanuel. Of course, after the Denmark BC rebellion failed, they burned that church down. But you have the kind of steady resistance, this persistence and determination on the part of the congregation. They conducted ser services <laughs> underground. It was a very secret kind of going until he could finally get it together to establish a church. And they went through an earthquake in 1886. It was destroyed again. But to show you the resilience, you know, of that congregation, they put it right back together again. And that's the church we have today that Reverend Pinckney was heading up. And so, I don't know. You know, you have that connection in trying to understand and get your arms around this situation. But... You know, you have so, such a combination of ingredients there, that are all combustible, and so it's hard to kind of deal with them. Maybe you can legislate uh, treatment, you know, for people who have mental illness and everything, but it's hard to legislate love, though. All right. Well, Herb Boyd from the Amsterdam News, thank you so much oh, for your insight tonight. You, Great to have you. Mm -hmm.